everyone, welcome to another episode of Hourglass, episode 12. I'm your host, Alshima, more than tits and ass. And this episode, I'm a little behind, but everything's still perfect. I was only two minutes late. Shit happens, things go on, and you just move forward. So this week, I wanted to touch base as long as... as blah, I wanted to touch base in regards to Friday, where I did a recording on my Instagram stories of me and my thrift shopping experience and my adventures and whatever the case might be. And so I kind of wanted to go over that and just talk to you about me and thrift shopping. Because if you do not know, because some of you might may not know at all, my life is nothing but thrift shops. Um, when I am bored at the house, I like to go thrift shopping. If we have money and we uh, need some more clothes, I like to go thrift shopping. If I want to update my home decor, I'll go thrift shopping. Um, thrift shopping is literally my life. I go, I try not to go very often, but honestly, within a month, I probably go as often as I'm gonna say to three to four times in a month. So that's actually pretty frequently. That's roughly once a week. Um, so that might be too much. But one thing that I like about thrift stores is you don't necessarily feel as bad spending money because it's a lot cheaper than if you go to department stores or anything along those lines. Um, also, I would like to add, I'm kind of winging this episode. Uh, since I am a little late and things just happen, I didn't have time to actually write anything out. So bear with me as I go off tangent and say whatever just my mind comes up with in that second. And I might say a lot of ums because I'm trying to think of something. So as far as my week went, nothing um, that I really felt is worth sharing. I can't necessarily recall right now. Too much is in my mind. So, oh, one of the biggest things. Biggest episode is happening next week um, with my sister. So that's going to be exciting if you are interested in just asking some very, um, not necessarily personal, but just asking my sister questions about the younger version of me or asking my sister just questions for herself. I will definitely have questions for her. Um, I feel like it's going to be embarrassing for me, so I'm going to be prepared to just in case ask some embarrassing questions towards her. I don't know, we'll see. Um, I obviously don't want her to like shy away from the episode, so hopefully she'll still be on board when she comes into town next week. But yes, definitely mark your calendars for next week. You'll have my lovely sister Keiko on this show. So that will be very exciting. I'm actually like really antsy about it. Like I can't wait just because I'm, I'm very curious on how she's going to, um, I don't know, like be on the show. Because some people, they can't necessarily, uh, like they don't know necessarily what to expect being on the show. Uh, a lot of times even before Hourglass on Be Cool, actually before I started the, you know, having people right next to me doing everything on Skype, a lot of people just had like a basic, because they couldn't see anything. So they would just talk to me as if it was just a normal conversation almost, but it was on Skype. Uh, people that would actually be next to me, they would be so distracted with what's happening on my screen. So that's why I kind of adjusted them to be kind of catty quartered from me instead of right next to me on this season so they can't see what's happening on my screen because a lot of people, including myself, will start reading comments and just trying to answer things immediately um, while I kind of have it already set in line. So I'm very curious on how she's going to act in a sense because I know my sister um, and it's interesting because when she'll be here it is technically just me and her. Technically like it's for other people it's weird because y'all might be watching right now but it's hard to really actually imagine that people are physically like listening to you at this very second um so yeah i felt like there was oh also i wanted to mention this week and i feel like the following weeks i'm not necessarily going to be advertising the podcast on my social media so i kind of already assumed there was going to be some low social numbers as far as who tunes on tunes on turns on tunes on to this episode and for the future episodes i've realized especially with me trying to be on a social media hiatus that me posting about my podcast is not necessarily helping that case because I still have to get onto Instagram and physically post it and do it at the right time and all that fun stuff. And it was perfectly fine, but I think if I really want to do the hiatus aspect of it and just take a break and make room f for me to breathe, I think not advertising the podcast right now is probably a good 
move for me. So I'm totally expecting very low numbers on this episode, and that is totally fine. I honestly could care less. So, awesome. Okay, back into the actual episode at hand. So like I said, Friday I went to a thrift store, and I recorded it on Instagram Stories. I did save the videos, but with my time crunch of today, I didn't actually have time to get it together. So sorry for anyone that missed those stories. Um, Hopefully I will have time to recreate behind the scenes for my YouTube channel. But aside from that, I mean, you necessarily didn't miss too much other than the visuals. Uh, Because whatever I discussed on that episode, or in the stories, I will discuss tonight. Um, So basically the gist of me going to a thrift store on Friday was not only to record myself um, during the process, but I also wanted to kind of set a goal or a competition for myself because every time I go to thrift stores I just go see whatever I can get and find see if it fits and then hopefully it's not too crazy as far as price goes there's very very rare that I go and already have a budget in mind sometimes I'll know okay I can't spend too much money meaning I can't spend more than twenty dollars and when that happens, usually I try not to even buy anything at all, except for if it's a small, like $3 little trinket or whatever the case might be. So doing this episode and having something set for my adventure on Friday, basically I had to do something that was still going to be exciting, but also challenging for me. And what I ended up coming up with was trying to find an outfit for 15 to $20. When I originally wrote this idea out, when before Hourglass even started, like as an actual season, I wrote it, it was going to be $15. But then I kind of like second guessed myself and was unsure $15 was $15 was a good enough budget because what I was trying to aim for was to get an entire outfit, meaning shirt, pants or skirts, um, and shoes. And... I could easily do that with if I got a dress. Dresses are literally one outfit by itself a lot of times. Um, So I was really unsure if I could hit the $15 mark. So right before I like announced it on the episode and even like posted it on social media, on Twitter especially, I was like, okay, it's going to be $15 to $20. Let me just do a $20 buffer just in case I can't uh, complete it in $15. I don't want to make my, you know, get all sad about it or whatever the case might be. So it was a $15 to $20 budget that included the entire outfit. So like I said, t-shirt or a shirt or blouse or whatever, uh, pants and shoes. It was going to be an added bonus if I could find accessories, meaning a purse or earrings or just jewelry in general. And even added bonus if I could find like a blazer or jacket, although I didn't necessarily need that. So when I first went into the Salvation Army, which was actually in Ann Arbor, I hope I'm not being too loud, but which was actually in Ann Arbor, I immediately thought, well, I don't want to force myself to get something that I don't necessarily need because I did want to make an, like, an activity out of it, but I also didn't want to just have my money go to waste. So I decided if I realistically could not find something that I felt truly that I needed, I was just not even going to bother with it, and I might just make the episode like, hey, shit happens, you can't find everything that you want. Um, But fortunately, I did, and everything ended up actually working out even better than I planned it. So before I actually get really deep into um, what I got in my experience, hold on, let me close the door. Akira face is literally going psycho right now. Um, Before I get really deep into my experience on Friday, I want to just backtrack and inform you about thrift shopping in general because a few of you may not even know. Well, it would be crazy if you don't know about thrift shopping, but if you don't for whatever reason, I'm not judging, um, let me just kind of inform you of the idea. So thrift shopping is basically when you have a lot of clothes that you don't wear anymore or you just want to get rid of, instead of throwing them away in the trash, you should definitely just donate it, right? And when you donate it, it goes to these lovely stores, either Goodwill, Salvation Army, here in Detroit's Value World. Um, There's also St. Vincent de Paul. A lot of them are actually religious geared towards, like they're, like, I know Salvation Army and St. Vincent de Paul are for sure like a religious stores. Um, Goodwill, no, and the Valley World, I don't believe so. But, and then there's like little smaller, um, independents, like, not necessarily a hole in the walls, but like family-owned thrift shops, in a sense, or a little smaller church. Churches actually do thrift shopping, in a sense, too. 
So it's just basically whatever clothes you originally donate most likely always go end up going to a thrift shop and those end up being a lot cheaper prices um, to the point where I got a free shirt at a thrift shop and it was literally the best shirt I've ever gotten in my entire life which was Dolphins and I wore it on episode I can't remember what episode that was like seven with Tara Castro Free shirt was amazing, but basically you get you these people buy these items for a very very low price. It could be a high end um, merchandise, so say higher end because they do have coach items, but the thrift shops know that those are kind of like designer products, so they will put a higher budget than what's normal. But like if it is coach shoes, I've seen thrift shops charge $30 for the shoes. In my mind, that's too expensive, even though I know coach shoes are way more expensive than $30. But if I'm at a thrift shop, I'm not looking to buy $30 shoes. I'm in there to buy something under $10 if I'm lucky. Um, same thing like with black um, let's see, let's see, I'm trying to think of name brands, uh, name brands, ah, White House Black Market, if I do believe, uh, that one's not as high-end as Coach, but at least, a, you know, a shirt will cost $40. At a thrift store, they range from, you know, $3 up to, like, $10 sometimes. It just depends on some of the thrift shops. So my previous history with thrift shops actually didn't come until later in life. I never even shopped at one prior to meeting Francis. Francis actually introduced me to the idea of thrift shops. And the first time I went to a thrift shop, I kid you not, I thought it was the most disgusting thing to ever happen in my life. Um, the idea of wearing hand-me-downs, aside from people like I don't even know, wearing their clothes, putting it on my body, and just being in this weird environment. It felt sometimes a lot of the thrift stores can feel very grungy and dirty and just dim light and not very nice i'll tell you that for a fact um but so my first experience i was going through each and every item of clothing and like barely trying to touch it because i just thought it was so grimy touching all of these random people clothes that they used to wear and sweat in and maybe died in or whatever the case might be it took me so long to kind of get over that idea and even to this day my family um will like look at me sideways for saying i buy shoes at thrift stores um i know a lot of people actually will look at me sideways for that but i don't give a look um so nonetheless it did take me a while to understand thrift shops and to kind of accept it nowadays i will go and touch all of the clothes i will literally turn them inside out just to make sure they look uh decent and there's not like crazy holes in them or whatever the case might be um the only thrift shopping experience that i have not accepted and it's just a personal thing with me is the bins so regular technically regular thrift shops um, or like any other store, they have the racks and hangers. Um, they have their shoes propped on shelves. They sell random knickknacks and bedding and furniture, whatever you whatever you can think of. Their shops usually have usually what people just donate. Um, so that be like pl planter pots, or I'm looking at my studio. Um, clocks, frames. Uh, there's everything. I just can't think of furniture, chairs, whatever the case might be. Thrift shops sell it. But there's this one, especially in Florida, I haven't really necessarily came across it in Detroit, but they would have these bins. And the bins were basically like what thrift shops couldn't sell or even sometimes um, just they decided to pick and choose from random donation bins. They threw it into this almost like a warehouse store with these big like push massive bins um and they literally just throw everything in there so if it's kids stuff so say toys they literally throw all the toys in this one to two bins same thing with clothes doesn't matter what the color the cut the style the size um whatever else goes with clothes they didn't care you know you just threw it in the bin and what you were supposed to do as a consumer was to go and dig through the bins and find something. I don't, that's not my cup of tea when it comes to thrift shops. Um, I just haven't felt like that is, and it's not necessarily that it's not sanitary. It's just, I don't know, sometimes it worries me digging through shit like that. You don't know what might accidentally stab you. Um, not saying like there's knives hidden, because they always, always also like, like 
lock up knives and like kitchenware type stuff but um just still nonetheless it feels more grimy to me at the bins um for those that do all the shopping at bins i totally give you props on it i wish because you can get shit for super cheap um meaning like you can get an entire garbage bag <laughs> it sounds so bad but you can literally get an entire garbage bag for like five dollars and if you think about it that garbage bag could probably fit about like 20 to 50 pairs of clothing and stuff um so it's totally mega deals but i just i personally can't get over the fact of digging for my outfits especially i also do like having um some organization to it uh i'm not very patient that much so i need them to either be color uh color organized or size organized um to make my shopping experience a little bit more manageable so those are the ones I can't touch. Again, I didn't write in my notes, so I'm sorry um, if my sequencing is very off. Um, so just bear with me on it. So I'm trying to think real fast. Um, that was my history with Strew Shops. It took me a while to kind of accept it and to like get a good grasp of it. And now I love thrift shops. I've found some amazing deals um, at thrift shops, meaning I found a Ralph Lauren peacoat jacket um, with a hood that original price, I think I looked up, could cost of roughly around $75 to $150. Um, I got it for 50 cents and it's pretty legit. Keeps me warm. Perfect jacket for the winter time. Um, another piece of merchandise that I bought was the free shirt that was just I didn't necessarily need the shirt and I didn't necessarily love the shirt but it was just the idea that it was a free shirt and I wanted it because it was free and it was dolphins I don't know just something about it just screamed she might you should get this goddamn shirt um two things question and statement one what's the best ever thrift shop find two the screensaver you tweeted was unreal Yes, you can find a lot of actually, um, side note, you can find a lot of my photos, um, new photos on Tumblr. Tumblr's already queued up with all of the photos you have not seen. Twitter and Instagram, so far behind on lacking on that, but again with uh, me trying to just take a break and get away from social media, I'm not really bugging too much about it. Um, I feel like Instagram and Twitter can wait. Um, so if you really need to see photos of me, uh, go on Tumblr. Tumblr literally has all of the new photos. So aside from two things uh, or the best ever thrift shop find. So one was the 50 cent peacoat jacket from Ralph Lauren. Um, the other one, one of the best finds was not at a thrift shop. It was at a yard sale. So I'll say it, but let me try. I'll also think of a thrift shop one. But the yard sale was an Ikea couch. For five dollars and there was original price at ikea was like three hundred dollars and the only thing wrong with this couch was the leg popped off but it just ne honestly needed to be like stapled back in um so realistically i got a five dollar couch and it was amazing and we still use it to this day so kudos on me but another thrift shop buy that was a mega like awesome deal i found so this is not for me but i found countless actually Timberlands. I have five pairs of Timberlands. Um, I probably paid a total for all five pairs. It's hard to assume, but I probably paid no more than 30. I definitely didn't pay more than $50 for the five pairs of Timberlands. I maybe paid no more than like 30 to $40, but I bought them at separate times. Um, so I literally, yeah, have five pairs of Timberlands. I found Francis a Super Dupa. No, wait. It's that Japanese, um, clothing store like that fucking helps um i can't remember but it's like this huge ass like throw jacket i don't know what you call those things i'm really bad at describing clothes but it was this like massive expensive jacket and i found francis and it was literally like 15 dollars when original price was maybe roughly 75 dollars so one of the biggest things about thrift shops is if you have no money or you're super broke or you might have money, but you want to go and do an adventure and you don't know what you're going to find, I highly suggest thrift shops. They're just, I don't know, there's something about them that they're amazing. You can find literally the best things sometimes. Um, like I found an Andrew Wyeth poster of Helga and at a thrift shop. And it was like, tw the price tag is still on it, but I can't see it from here. It was like no more than $20. Um, I found like a 
d reindeer looking um like plaque for my uh studio that's one of those like wood cutouts and you put it together to make it a 3d thing i found that for like three bucks um i found literally my l money um little like letters for like five bucks I found a Polaroid camera for like three bucks. A lot of these numbers I'm kind of making up because I can't remember how much I not naturally spent. But you can find some amazing things. Like recently, actually, Francis found a $40 book for only 20 cents. I mean, seriously, you can't go wrong with thrift shops. So, um, especially when it came down to me living in Florida, we could not... Uh, afford much i've mentioned in previous episodes that we would have been homeless if it wasn't for our amazing landlord at the time um so when it comes to thrift shops they were always helpful especially being a model and constantly having to update my wardrobe and shoot at you know new and different things i really needed um the thrift shop because i needed to constantly buy things if i didn't have a thrift shop and i bought like even just h&m products i would literally be in debt to the severeness like i don't even know if that's a word but i would be in so heavy much debt heavy much debt i don't know, I don't know what i'm saying anymore um so thrift shops really come in handy when you're just low on budget and you just need some new clothes and all the fun stuff um yeah five dollar couch yeah it was it was glorious again it was at a yard sale so it technically wasn't at a thrift shop but it was totally worth it and amazing and it was exciting and yeah it was awesome to this day even i'll go to an h&m because i have like gift cards <laughs> it's the only time i go to like department stores um is either for if i because i had a gift card or i'll go to a department store because i need undies i i really won't go and do lingerie type pieces at a thrift store um although i'm not gonna lie i've done it before don't get me wrong i obviously make sure it's washed and super clean before i put those damn things on me so you might be like ew yeah i get it but i don't go when you're broke it does not matter by that point if i needed a shoot in some glamour shit for modeling it doesn't matter i'm not dropping 20 30 dollars for a bra from victoria's secret because i can't afford that I'd rather draw, <laughs> spend $2 for a laundry set at Valley World or wherever it's at. So, um, trying to again think of other things for the history's sake before I get deep into the Friday and what was things that I've involved. Um, and if y'all have questions on Twitch or on Instagram, feel free, go for it, shoot me um, a message or whatever the case might be. I'm trying to think real fast, but nothing honestly at this moment is coming to mind. Awesome. I'll also like to mention too, um, sometimes when you buy things at thrift stores, they may or may not work, especially like electronics. They'll advertise, advertise it as is. You can't return anything, um, clothes and like electronics and knickknacks and stuff like that. So a lot of times, sometimes when you buy things, they might not actually be technically well worth it. They might not work or whatever the case might be. But if you think about it, it was cheap and it doesn't matter. And you technically donated money to these charities, um, religious or not. Uh, I just still, the idea of helping somebody somewhere by putting money into, you know, value world makes things go round. I know some companies, people will say Goodwill is actually not very um, good on the, uh, like, giving money to them and stuff. But honestly, again, I'm broke and no, I'm not as much. But um, I, I still can find deals at Goodwill. And I mean, I just... <laughs> So ignorance is bliss at that point. I just don't think about it. Um, I just go to Goodwill. I Here in Detroit, honestly, Goodwill's not as great. So And there's not really a De Detroit Goodwill. You have to go either to Dearborn or like somewhere else in the boonies. Um, so I really don't go to Goodwill anyways. I go more to Salvation Army, Value World, sometimes St. Vincent de Paul, or just independent thrift shops in the area. Um, so, yeah. There's nothing else necessarily history-wise. Um, or any stories that come to mind. Um, so I'm going to begin about Friday. So like I said, Friday, I needed to find an entire outfit for 15 to $20. Bonus points if I was able to find accessories. So I ended up going to Ann Arbor, a Salvation Army in Ar Ann Arbor, which is only like 45 to 50 minutes from Detroit. I went to Ann Arbor because I just literally had a meeting um, in Ann Arbor, so it just made sense to 
go to Ann Arbor anyways. Um, so realistically, that's my only reason why I went. It's not because that was supposed to be the best Salvation Army. If you're in Detroit, my favorite Salvation, or yeah, my favorite, actually, my favorite thrift shop in all of Detroit is the Salvation, and it's not necessarily in Detroit, it's Detroit metro, like, area, um, is off Gratiot and Roseville. It's the Salvation Army, and that is the, actually the amazing area of thrift shops because no joke and within a five mile radius there is a value world a salvation army that's amazing a dav i think that's disabled army veterans um thrift shop and then there's like this like two independent thrift shops and i think that's it in a five mile radius there's literally five thrift shops it's amazing little area um when you really just want to go crazy I highly suggest that area. Um, A second favorite one, but it's super expensive and I just don't understand why, um, is in Royal Oak. It's a Salvation, but it's called Sally's on 4th. That one is if you want to be a little bougie and spend a little bit more money. It's a Salvation Army, like I said, but for some reason it's more expensive. I think they're more gearing it as like a boutique. So instead of a shirt being, you know, average, let's say $5, at the Sally's on 4th and Royal Oak, they charge, like, average $12. Excuse me. So it's a lot more expensive. Um, I try not to actually look at the clothes as much at that place unless there's deals. Otherwise, I'll go to the knickknacks because knickknacks, for me, I feel like are well worth spending some type of money, depending. Um, so, yeah. All right. I think that's it. Sorry, I keep getting sidetracked, and that's what happens when I don't write notes. So, again, bear with me on that. So, Friday, yes. Outfit, $15 to $20. Accessory, bonus points. So, I went to Ann Arbor, and I picked Salvation Army because I've been to the Salvation Army before, and I had great experience with it, although I didn't necessarily buy anything the last time I went because it was on 4th of July, and the lines were ridiculously long, and I had places to be, people to see kind of thing. So, um... This is technically the first time I actually went and bought something at this thrift shop, but I've already experienced it, and it seemed like a great place to do the episode with. So one of the biggest things to start off with is, and like I mentioned, every thrift shop is going to be different, um, meaning like Valley World versus Salvation Army, uh, St. Vincent de Paul versus Goodwill. All of them are going to be different. Salvation Army likes to colorize that's right word, um, they're clothes. So they group them with reds, blacks, whites, grays, browns, orange, blues, greens, whatever the colors are. Um, and then they'll organize it based on that, and then they'll also organize it based on patterns. Um, all of them, hands down, they do organize it like these are tops, these are no sleeves, these are long sleeves, these are sweaters, these are pants, these are skirts. All of them will organize it based on the item itself, Um, But all of them are different on how deep they get into the organizing those items. So Salvation World will do the colors. Um, What's the one? Uh, I think there's one that actually does the sizes. I think that's St. Vincent de Paul. That's amazing when they do organize it by size. Because especially if you're not a patient human being, go to the one. And you want to like experience thrift shops. Try to find the ones that do organize by size. Because at least that will make it easier for you. You're not, you know, if you're a size extra large, you don't have to worry about going through a whole bunch of damn smalls and eventually hoping you'll find something that looks awesome. They already have it in the extra large section, and now at that point you just got to figure out which one you like. Um, But Salvation Army and all the other ones that do it based on colors, it's still not as bad. It's not bad at all, in my opinion. Um, but it's just going to take a lot more time and most likely you have to go through every single, uh, piece to see if you find an awesome item. So it's a hit and miss. Um, sometimes, like I said, you'll leave with nothing. Sometimes you'll leave literally with an entire garbage bag. And when you do leave with an entire garbage bag, it's amazing. (laughs) It's just like, I literally bought this entire thing for like $20. It can be really ridiculous. Um... So, yeah, just be aware uh, that they organize it always differently. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much the it with that. So with this episode or this adventure that I had at Salvation Army, I knew, okay, I need some tops and I need some pants. Eventually, I also need some shoes. So I mentioned 
went first to the blouses of the short sleeves. So like I said, they do organize it on short sleeves, long sleeve, t-shirts, whatever the case might be. Um, but I, again, wanted something that I'd actually wear and kind of need. So I decided to start with the short sleeves and move from there. Uh, so I went through every single piece. No joke. It does take some time and that's where you can, a lot of people lose their patience. But if you don't, or if you're not thorough, um, that's where you might miss out on an amazing goodie. Either that be name brand or that be just something that's going to fit you fantastically or your favorite color, whatever the case may be. That's where you can miss out on a good amount of things. Now, there are times when I don't go through every single item, such as skirts. Uh, usually skirts, I will immediately look at the color and texture of the skirt itself and kind of skip everything else, especially, especially pants. I don't go through every pant um, just because there's so many usually and it's just not really fun for me. Um, one of the biggest things too that I said in the stories is when I first started thrift shopping, I immediately handled everything by going just and getting going through the dresses. For me, browsing through dresses was an easy way of getting things done. Uh, so for girls and guys, because guys can wear dresses all they want. Um, if you're new to thrift shopping experience, go to, you know, St. Vincent Paul, the ones that organize it by size, but also go to dresses. Dresses are easy. They're an entire outfit in one, um, and they don't necessarily have that much. They might have one to two racks. So dresses were always like a fallback. That's where I always would go because it was just so easy to find a dress. I didn't have to touch as much stuff. I didn't have all the shit I had to look at. Um, it was so much easier. The ones that I was always scared to look at the most was pants. Finding a pant that fits you perfectly, that's the right cut, that's the right color and texture um, is the hardest thing, I think, at a thrift shop. I think it's harder than skirts and shorts and even shirts. Pants, for whatever God-given reason, is just extremely difficult, for me at least. I've grown up to that phase where I can handle it. Um, but especially when I first started, I was intimidated by pants. I would not, it would take me forever to finally get the courage to go through pants. Um, because if you're a girl or a guy, you know when you need the right fit of pants. They can't be too tight. They can't be too loose. They, the, the cut on the ankle, you don't want them, if you're not looking for a boot cut, then you're looking for a skinny leg. Um, just finding that is so difficult. Um, so that's my personal two cents with that. So I started with shirts, went through all the shirts, eventually decided, okay, I need to find bottoms. Um, but before I got to bottoms, one of the biggest things was I needed to find shoes. So like I said, some of y'all might be like, you know, Shayma, that's fucking gross. Yeah, whatever. Suck a nut. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so mean. I didn't mean to come out so mean. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that so offensively. Um, but no, nonetheless, I know it can sound gross. Um, but again... When you have no money, it honestly doesn't matter by that point. Um, and you can also wash shoes. So, seriously. Uh, but I knew I needed to find shoes because that was part of the challenge was to find an entire outfit including shoes. My experiences with shoes at thrift shops is very, very difficult because um, I'm very picky with my shoes. And they not only have to fit my foot, which is an eight foot, um, but they also need to look a certain way and they can't be too crazy high of a heel unless they're just not going to be worn ever except for shoots. That's usually my case. I don't wear heels that often um, unless they're for shoots and they have to look at least clean as best as possible meaning they can't look like they've been through hell and back five times. No way. Jose, I do have limits to shoes. So I immediately decided I need to check out the shoes first because it's going to take me a little bit more of a hard time. And I was honestly worried I was not going to find the shoes. So fortunately, I actually found, I think, three pairs of shoes. And one was a flat, one was a heel, and the other one was like a boot type thing. So I ended up grabbing them. And they all honestly said like size 7 to 7.5. So I still risked it. I'm like, fuck it, whatever. I'm just going to throw in the cart, hope something works out of these. And we'll work on that when it gets to that time. Uh, 33 inch legs, I know that shit sucks. All pants are flood pants. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Pants are not the funnest. But when you find an awesome pair of pants, 
it makes your mind go round. You're like, damn, that was fun, right? At least for me. So once I was done with shoes, then I went to skirts, and then I eventually made it to pants. Um, so I knew, and then I think I went through shorts as well. Uh, when I, once I was done actually finding a good amount of items to try on, I ended up taking a browse through knickknacks and furniture because that's honestly my favorite thing at thrift shops is the knickknacks and sometimes furniture, but I don't necessarily need furniture that much, um, especially nowadays. Uh, so knickknacks are my favorite. Like I literally bought this yesterday. <laughs> so I went to start shopping on Friday and then I went shopping yesterday. See how addicted I am. Um, so I bought this like little dog. Um, I forgot what Francis names this dog, but he names it something. I only found it for three dollars. So it's like this gold, pretty heavy um, dog. So I'll show Instagram first, yeah, and then show the video first, so or second. So finding knickknacks are my all-time favorite. I found like a little Asian lantern. I found a little Buddha dude. Um, I found another Buddha candle set. I found a samurai. I found a, there's too many Buddha stuff in my studio though. Anyways, um, frame. I found a lot of frames and other things. Uh, I'm trying to think of sides. Like I even found, there's a shit ton of Buddha stuff in my studio. That's amazing. I don't even pay attention. Found this guy. He's amazing. Makes me laugh. Cause look at that face. Look at that face. Hey, I'm doing fantastic. How about y'all? Um, so aside from yeah clothes you can find some amazing shit at thrift stores knickknacks again my favorite thing just going through with knickknacks they will organize it a lot of them by like silvers and worker and gold and wood and um glassware uh plates uh christmas stuff if you especially if you want to celebrate the holidays and you want some holiday decorations thrift shows are always the best you might not find like the exact thing you want like Halloween stuff I really want like a scary um thing but at thrift stores I really have not found a super scary item yet because they're all like a pumpkin smiling I'm like I don't fucking want a smiling pumpkin I want one that's like looks like it's gonna eat your head off um so aside from that yeah you can find a lot of awesome things I have not found an amazing coffee mug yet but I'm still looking uh and I found a juicer and a no i haven't found a blender well i kind of found a blender but not well worth speaking about uh i found a wok and a crock pot i've found fabrics to make like clothes with Alejandro, Ale Alejandro. um i have found a few other items that i can't think of at this very moment but it's totally worth it and you can also find monitors if you're a computer person and you want to have dual monitors or tri monitors if that's a word um their shops also provide you with that as well I found two 15 dollar dell monitors um back in florida so yeah any books too francis loves looking through books i am not a big fan of looking through books but eventually I'll make it through there, but at this time, yeah. So, okay, aside from that, went through all the knickknacks and furniture, um, found a Picasso, not necessarily paint, well, like, sketches, um, for only, like, 10 to 15 dollars, I think it was 12 dollars, for 12 dollars, and then bought some, Francis, some books that he saw the last time we were there. So, once I got to the actual fitting rooms, um, I had roughly about, like, 15 things to try on. Uh, oh no, Islam, what, do you know why? Question mark. What, what do I know why? Sorry, I missed your previous, is there a way you can go like, oh, you can't, wow, okay. Um, I am so sad right now, really sad. Okay, inform me why you're so sad. Um, so, I went and tried about 16 things, and when you go to thrift shops, and even when you go to like H&M and other department stores, sometimes things don't work. Sometimes they look uh amazing and other times when you put it on your body it's not the same alejandro you ask what the topic is tonight you should have came right at nine o'clock no i'm just kidding um topic is about thrift shops and my experiences and what i did on friday to buy outfit uh for 15 to 20 dollars so i'm getting to that i will show you what i bought in a hot second um so i went through all of the items and some of them were misses some of them were like maybes like i found this really nice v-cut american apparel long sleeve white shirt it looked amazing 
but I didn't feel like it was appropriate for what I really needed at that moment. Um, it still looked amazing, and but I just, if I would have bought, bought it, I would have went over budget, and it was something I didn't necessarily need, so I didn't get it. Things like that happen. Um, and a lot of times, too, so once I was done trying all the clothes on, I have my cart filled with all the clothes, and I immediately put the ones that just didn't fit, or just immediately did not look good. I just threw them back. The next step was to look at what I got that actually fits and looks good and what the prices were. So at a lot of thrift shops, I think all of them have deals. Um, I can't think of one that doesn't, but I'm sure there's some that may not have deals. But at thrift shops, a lot of times they'll have colored uh, deals, percentages off. Because um, usually their tags will be colored like this, just random colors and stuff. So when I went to the Salvation Army, they were, oh my God, y'all are uh, going crazy. Um, oh yeah, sorry Islam, that's unfortunate, but you know, things happen. All right. So basically, I went to Salvation Army and noticed immediately when you first walk in, they'll have like a white erase board or whatever the case might be with their deals for that day. So when I went on Friday, I think it was white tag was 25% off and tan tag was 50% off. So the Legion Army used to do 75% off deals, but for some reason they took it away. I was very bummed about that. But whatever it happens and then some salvation armies will do like five for five dollars so this one um if you got five tan clothing items five of them it will be five dollars so no matter what the price originally was so if you found a coach what a, uh i don't know if shoes count as clothing so if you found like a coach i don't know if coach even makes coach makes clothes right yeah duh um if you found like a coach shirt that was tan tag for say fifty dollars and you found four other items that were tan tags you could get that coach item for only a dollar fucking awesome right yes the only downside is you really got to be focusing on the tan colors and sometimes that is not very fun especially when you um want to find something that appropriately fits or is a style that you're actually happy with sorry instagram my phone was at a bad angle so at this time, white was 25, tan was 50, or 5 for 5 for tan tags. And then they'll also do deals for like knickknacks and a few other things, but at that moment, I didn't care. So <laughs> I had the clothes that were totally awesome, but now I had to look at the prices. So I went through each and every one of them. Um, so let's, mm, how do I want to handle this? Do I just want to go ahead and show you what I ended up choosing in the prices. Yes, we'll just do that. Okay, so bear with me as I reset. Uh, Instagram, let me uh, let me get you out and I'll show you since y'all won't be able to see it anyways. All right, so bear with me. Hey, that's what you see. Okay, so let's go down here. So the first item that I ended up getting, I said first item, now keep that in mind. First one I got was this outfit, so. Awesome. So this outfit cost me, I think I calculated it to be um, either $9 or $11. So, okay, bear with me about this. So the shirt, I should have seen if I was prepared, I would have totally had all of this written. Um, let's see. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to think real fast. So the pants that I'm wearing here are... I want to say they, they're they not White House Black Market or whatever the freak that store is called. Um, they're not Ralph Lauren. I can't think. They're designer name brand. I just can't think of their name. So those pants originally cost me tan tag for $7.99. The top, I'm going to assume, I can't remember which price the ta this top was, but I'm going to say the top was, uh, let's say, $4.99. Nah, no, let's say the top was $3.99 tan tag and then the shoes were not in here but I do believe the shoes are $5.99 so do the math I can't remember I, I know it's either $9 or $11 um so I ended up buying this outfit found an entire outfit for roughly $9 to $11 um totally amazing in my personal opinion because again I when I go to thrift shops I never actually 
I pay attention to the prices, but I never actually have like a major budget that I need to try to hit. So this was really a challenge for me because I was, again, worried that I wasn't going to be able to hit the budget. So I literally bought an entire outfit, including shoes, for only $11 um, max. I thought that was amazing and something that I just never realized I could do in the first place. Now, I did not buy accessories, so I technically did not get that bonus, but I did have enough in my budget to buy a whole new outfit. <laughs> so I'm currently wearing the shirt um, in this photo, and so I look very short in this image. Um, I literally took this 30 minutes before the episode started, but I ended up buying the shirt, which probably cost $2.99. Um, the shoes ended up costing $3.99, and I'm going to say the pants cost me $5. So I ended up buying two outfits for $20 exactly. Two outfits, $20 exactly. That is literally amazing. was not even expecting that. I think I blew my mind so hard right now, um, or even on Friday. I literally didn't know what to do. Uh, let me fit. Sorry, I'm trying to fit my phone back into this little slot. There you go, fit in there. So yeah, I was super amped about it. I was like, holy shit, I can't. And so when I was at the cart right after fitting things on or trying things on, I sat there and got my phone, got the calculated, and started crunching some numbers. So I'm like, okay, I like these green pants. So what's the price on that? Let's say that was eight dollars, but it was a tan tag. See, proof, $7.99, it's upside down or backwards on Instagram, but that says $7.99, tan tag. What did I say? Tan was 50% off. So that was immediately $4 for a pair of pants that was name brand. Um, let's say that shirt was, let's say that shirt was $3. This is $3, but for a yellow tag. So yellow tag was not on a deal, so it was a full $3. So I'm like, fuck, whatever, I can still, that still works. I got a tan tag for the pants, so that totally is fine. Um, the shoes also were like $5.99 tan tag. So I'm like, amazing. That means it was $3 with the 50% off discount. Um, the next outfit, again, I saw the pants. I'm like, I want these pants. Um, I think once I left or was done fitting on uh, the clothes, I immediately was just like, I need these pants. I want these pants. Um, the skirts I tried on weren't really like that amazing. And so I ended up just deciding I need the pants at least. If I can make both of these pants work and at least get one outfit plus some pants, I would call that amazing of a day. So then I saw the shirt in the first image. That one, here, I'll switch it on Twitch real fast. This shirt, um, I saw it when I went on 4th of July. I just didn't scoop it because, again, the line was ridiculously long, so we ended up not buying anything. So when I came back um, on Friday, I realized the shirt was still there, and I decided, all right, hopefully I can try it on, and it will fit, and everything will be perfect. So, by all means, it fit, it was perfect, and it was only, let me say, I guess it was only $4. So, it was tan tag for $4, so it was only $2. <laughs> so, by this point, I'm, like, excited. I'm, like, okay. So, I haven't spent that much money yet, and I haven't even went through jewelry either at this point. So, I was really amped about it. So, then, um, the other shirt, the shirt I'm wearing now... I looked at that, and unfortunately, it was... Oh, shit, I already lost all of my colors. Well, it was one of these colors. <laughs> and so, at the end of it, and with the shoes, I ended up buying two outfits for $20. One ended up being $9, and the other one was $11. I can't remember. I should have wrote this down. Didn't. Whatever. Um, by golly means, that literally was amazing. Um, for jewelry's sake... I did look. There was a ring that I wanted last time I was there. Again, line was too long. Didn't buy it. Um, but the ring wasn't there when I went on Friday, which was like, hmm. Um, the ring would have been $2, I think. And so I went on Friday. I looked at the jewelry. And nothing in the jewelry counter made me, like, scream. Jewelry with me, it has to be interesting enough. Like, these earrings. I thought, personally, for me, these earrings looked interesting, and I wanted to scoop them, and that's what I did. Same thing with my necklaces. If I have bracelets, same thing. Um, so I didn't get bonus points for jewelry, but I got amazing triple kudos for finding two outfits for $20. Um, so, yeah, that was honestly my experience with thrift shops. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention and that I mentioned in the stories while I was actually thrift shopping, one of my, like, what do you call it, um, uh, not religious acts, but just, like, 
something that like for me karma in a sense um when i go to thrift shops and you're browsing through all of those shirts especially shirts uh a lot of the shirts don't necessarily fit on hangers especially if you're a girl you understand like some shirts are very flowy and they just pop right off they're such a fucking bitch but when they do that especially when they do it with me let's switch it back to me um i feel like it's best for myself to fix it so say a shirt completely falls off the hanger i feel like it's in my best nature to put it back um because if i don't i'm gonna have really bad karma and i'm not gonna find any awesome deals uh, and it just makes everything like so much better because there's a lot of times when people don't give a fuck and I mean it's understandable some people are like oh you know there's people that are getting paid to fix this yeah but still like if you messed it up you should at least fix it it's being nice and caring you wouldn't want to clean up after somebody's damn mess even if you were getting paid for it you still wouldn't want to pick it up so if I fucked up a shirt, and even when I didn't mean to, a lot of times I don't even mean to, it just they just naturally fall off the hangers. Deep down inside, I'm like, Ugh, and I have to pick it up and then put it back on. But I feel so much better and proud of myself for doing it that way. Um, and for my sake, it's like karma. If I don't fix it, I'm not going to find amazing deals. And there's times when I do that and I don't find shit, but it just makes me feel a whole bunch, much better. Um, and then there was other things that I think I mentioned um, but I can't think of it, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't think of anything else. So I highly recommend their shopping for people that are either low on budget or just want to try something interesting and have an adventure and find some unique finds. Sometimes you'll find like a super vintage piece that's only $5 and it looks fantastic. Like those heels that are in the photo were mud and I'm sure mud still exists, but they looked literally like they came out of the 90s. And I felt like, yeah, I want some heels that look like they came from the 90s. What? That sounds amazing. Uh, there's a firefly on my window. Anyway, sorry, I distracted myself. So I'm trying to think, unless y'all have any questions, I think I'm going to wrap it a little early. I don't think I have anything else in my mind. Again, if I had notes, I would literally probably have something to say, but I just, I can't think of anything. So feel free to ask questions right now. If you don't have questions, I will wrap this early and call it a night because I'm tired and I'm exhausted and I have shit to do in the morning. Um, like I just wanted to thank you. Yes, the earrings are dope. I appreciate it here. They're like, I'll just take it off because I like, I don't care. Um, these are the earrings. I just, they're only $2, I think. And I just like the color. I'm not really much of a color person when it comes to clothing. So especially with jewelry, I feel like you need to color it up. But, um, like I mentioned in the beginning episode, uh, next week will be the most entertaining episode of them all. My sister will be here, and you can ask her crazy questions towards myself or towards her. Um, I will be trying to think of embarrassing things for my sister, uh, but... I don't also want to, like, scare her off. So I'm going to try to be, like, very, very gentle with her. Um, <laughs> but I'm really nervous because I feel like she's going to say the most embarrassing thing. I'm going to just accept it and be like, yeah, what? I, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's not, like, that ex embarrassing, but it's, like, still, like, whoa. Um, yeah, I vomited because I pretended that I would cho was choking on fat of a meat product when I was, like, seven what get over it um so i'm gonna try to like accept the embarrassing moments um that my sister may share with me um but i'm gonna come back at it with uh, embarrassing facts about her so i'm gonna be prepared i'm gonna be highly prepared or maybe not but nonetheless i'm excited for it i feel like it will be interesting i'm more curious on how she will handle herself and yeah uh hi am i older or younger i am younger so to bring some like back history a little bit, I will give more uh, like info uh, on the day of the episode next week. But I am younger. Um, I'm the baby of three children that my mom pushed out of her vagina. <laughs> um, and so my sister is seven years older than me, and my brother is the oldest, and he's 11 years older than me. Um, my brother will not be on the episode. My brother, I don't know if he'll ever be on the episodes. Um, but yeah, he's my bro. Um, 
So my sister's name is Keiko, K-E-I-K-O. I will, I'm thinking if I will advertise her Instagram next week. Um, I'll ask her actually, cause I don't, I don't want to like send her to so many, like, I don't know. I don't know if she's like comfortable with like having no offense, like random people follow her. Um, but she might be honestly, I, don't, I think she doesn't give a fuck. Um, but just in case I want to make sure she's fine with that. Um, Oh, man, I want to see that. Yeah, definitely, if you want to see my sister and me and just our dynamic selves with each other, um, definitely save the date next week. Uh, what is that? The 19th at 9 o'clock Eastern on Twitch or Instagram Live. Um, Instagram Live, y'all might be very far away, so warning. Um, if you have questions, go on Twitter. I'll leave Twitter up. Uh because I might not be able to see anything that y'all say. So, warning on that. Um, but I'm not sure. I might try to set it up better than the last few times. Um, favorite comedian. So, uh, who was it? Fuck, 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 fuck. Could, I couldn't say so many customers at one time. Um, I can't think. Uh, Louie. Yes, Louie was... Um, Louie's the first one that comes to mind. Um, I mean, I appreciate Bill Burr. And I did like Kevin Hart at one time. I even liked Cat Williams. I even liked Dan Cook at one time. Um, there's a few other ones, even like YouTubers. But um, currently right now, Louis uh, comes to mind because actually when I lived in Florida, my sister and I and Francis was watching one of Louis's specials and he was talking about a joke about uh, imagining if we had like lions and tigers um, living like normal. Because imagine like antelopes having to like be drinking at a water fountain, or not water fountain, but at like a river or something, and then immediately being attacked by a tiger or whatever, cheetah. I don't know. I can't think of what animals and what nature, but you know what I'm talking about. So he was talking about that, and just like he was basically saying, visualize if humans had a predator above us that we constantly had to hide from. And so he was basically making the idea like, oh, imagine like you're getting ready for work, you go brush your teeth, you take a shower, you eat some breakfast, and then you have to catch the bus. But in between, as soon as you step out of your house, to catch the bus you have to be on your toes for as a cheetah is about to come and take out your ass and so there's just moments where like he's visualizing a person or himself is running to catch the bus and be at safety while other person is just you know unfortunate that day and gets mauled by a fucking cheetah and so for some reason me and my sister just could not stop laughing because it was the most hilarious fucking thing i've ever heard in my life um but yeah, there's yeah. I think right now, uh, Louis is just in my mind. Um, Jack, uh, what's his name? Gaffigan. I can't think of his first name. His show was amazing. I don't, Jim Gaffigan. I don't know why he stopped making the show. I know he because he had family stuff, but still, nonetheless, his show. Check out get Jim Gaffigan's show because it was hilarious. Um, yeah. So yeah, mauled. It's funny, right? Uh, Louis C.K. is probably my favorite too. Chappelle is up there too. Chappelle's pretty good. I watched. His first special, recent one. I didn't catch the second one. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So, I think that's it. Y'all have any other questions? Going once. I'm going to wait a second. You have less than two minutes, according to Instagram. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm just, like, feeling, feeling, feeling silence. So, I'm just trying to think. Making sure. Going once. Going twice. <sighs> All right, everyone, thank you for an amazing episode. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed, and yeah, I will see you next week with my sister. You better be there. If you're not there, I will not honestly care. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier today, too, I'm most likely not going to advertise the podcast on my social media, so I hope by now you know Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, be there, Twitch, Instagram Live, I just threw paper, um, so I'm not going to advertise it, so don't expect any videos, don't expect any posts, just be there, know what's going on. If it, if it doesn't happen for whatever reason, any of the episodes, I will tell you. I'll be like, hey guys, this episode's not happening, just be aware. Um, but for now as it stands, July 19th, 9 p.m. Eastern, be here with my sister, it'll be amazing, it'll be awesome, it'll be crazy, I don't know, but yeah. All right, bye everyone on Instagram. I'll see you next week. Yeah. And everyone on Twitch, YouTube, and SoundCloud, thanks for tuning in, and I hope y'all enjoyed. I will see y'all next week. You better fucking be there. Be there. All right, bye y'all.